My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today, we're going to be talking about the stupid amount of articles and stuff. I'll put them up. Stuff like, oh, you don't need to warm your car up. Blah, 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 blah. All this shit. It's a nonsense. It's a lie. It's about carbureted engines. It's not about fuel injection. All this kind of rubbish. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about whether or not you should be warming up your engine from a cold start before driving off. And the real answer is no for fuel injected vehicles, but there are some negative consequences of injecting extra fuel. Gasoline is a solvent, so as you can see, when extra fuel gets on the cylinder walls, it washes away the oil from the cylinders and the pistons. Today I'm going to help you answer the question, should I warm up my engine before I drive it or not? And to answer that question correctly, we're going to have a little history lesson here. When I was young, everything had carburetors on them. And I'm so old, they actually had hand chokes on them. Hand chokes made them idle faster. When you pulled on them, they idled faster, and once they warmed up, you turned the choke off. So in any modern day car, you don't need to warm up the engine before you drive, but of course, you have to be logical about this. If your car's covered in snow and ice, heck, you gotta let it warm up so you're warm inside and you get the snow and ice off. But when it comes to your car, is warmth always better? Auto repair expert Steve Wilcox has some surprising news. You can take right off. There's no reason to let that car warm up for five, ten minutes. Can that really be right? After all we've been taught, in cold weather like this, you don't need to warm up your car? No, you do not need to warm up your car. Here's why. Technology. It's come a long way over the years, and the computers inside your vehicle that control the engine are programmed to optimize its performance no matter what the temperature is. The simple answer here is no, you do not need to let your engine warm up. A lot of studies have come out and they say that it's actually harder on the engine if you let it sit there and idle for 15 minutes than it is if you just let it run for 30 seconds or so and then drive it while it's cold. And, and let the engine warm up naturally. But the easiest way to let the engine warm up is to drive it. By letting it sit in idle, um, all you're doing is overloading the combustion chamber with too much gas to the point where it's not going to burn. It's weird that. I traced it back to a guy from MIT's Combustion Whatever, you, what have you. I can't remember if it was Tennessee or Illinois. I think it was Illinois. This one guy, all of these articles link back to this one guy who was in IndyCar racing, stuff like that. He's the guy saying it's nonsense. You can't, you can just switch it on and off you go. And a lot of people, when I do videos like this about this, they send me these same articles going, Matt, you're wrong, this, the, the, this article says this, this article says this. All these articles that I can find are linked to this one guy. You trace it back to the sources. It was in the business post. It was in all these other articles. And this is generally what happens is one guy says something. Yeah, he goes, Meh, bollocks. And then that is used for the source for all these articles. You know, the sun... You know, the Huffington Post, the fucking New Yorker, whatever, the New York Times, whatever. And it all just branches just from one thing. And because this guy's a combustion expert or what have you, then that's just taken as solid. And I get that. I can't find any data that he's produced. I've looked at his LinkedIn site. I can't find any of these papers where he's done this test or anything shit like that. What I can find, though... Um, is the multiple patents. So this is patent JP 200 117-4489A, which is really funny because this is a patent that was, the patent application was put in in 2001 by the Yamaha Motor Company Limited, <laughs> by Yamaha, and one of the guys that cited, one of the inventors, is a guy called... Tomomi Suzuki. 
<laughs> now I know Suzuki and all these names like Yamaha, Honda and stuff, these are surnames of people, I get that. But it must be just quite funny being one of the inventors, one of the head engineers at Yamaha being called Suzuki. I just think that's quite funny. But anyway, you get your kicks where you can. This pattern is about, uh, it says, problem to be solved. To provide an idle rotational speed controller for an engine capable of executing first idling rotation control corresponding to a warm-up state of, of the engine well. Now, it says the engine well, warm up the engine well. Um, it's a translation from Japanese, so Google Patents has just translated this, so it doesn't make complete sense. Solution, this idle rotational speed controller controls an idle rotation speed of the engine such that the idling rotation speed becomes a target rotation speed. The controller detects lubricating oil temperature and controls the idling rotational speed with the first idling rotation speed set to the basis of detecting lubrication oil in temperature as a target rotation speed when detecting lubricating oil temperatures is a prescribed value or lower. Wow, that's patent talk for you. It's just the way they have to do it so that all things are legal beagle and there's no loopholes and things can't be misconstrued or misunderstood or what have you. That's just pattern speak. When you look through the pattern, I'm not going to read it all, it talks about the claims and all the rest of it, about fast idle and blah, 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 blah. I found some more. There was one from Suzuki, there was one from Honda. Idling, um, what's this one called? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I don't want to just open that link because it goes down some rabbit hole. But basically... The Z900 has a fast idle control, and in the manual it says basically that when the engine starts up, it will go into fast idle mode to help warm the engine up, so when the engine's warm, it can then fuck off. Right, so we're outside, and I've got my fucking phone in my hand, trying to do the light at the same time, and the sound's probably going to be shite, but anyway. My phone says... Oh, come on! My phone says that it is 7 degrees, but it feels like zero, pussies. It's obviously written by a southerner, is this software. But anyway, so, uh, this is my bike. It is a 2018, um, well, the end of 2018. This is done 2,000 miles. This is my Z900. Um, it is not the most uh, up-to-date bike in the world, as in for the year you can get more high-tech bikes than this but if I can position it properly she's been sat out in the wet um, because I was letting it cool down but you can see I'm grabbing the exhaust pipes right she is cold I mean like cold you know it's fucking freezing um, well not freezing it's seven degrees but anyway so what happens when you start up this new Kawasaki that they've released this was designed in 2015, 16, and released in 17. So we turn it on. As you can see, it says there, our temperature, if you can see that, our temperature there says that it's, you know, it's cold as fuck. Right, <laughs> that's what officially it means. <laughs> me forcing it I let go it goes like that
so there you have it basically what's happening is is that the engine has got a system in place that basically reads the temperature i don't know if this is water or oil this one i haven't actually checked oh car manufacturers don't give a shit right if you fucking start wearing out your engine earlier that's fucking great for them because they can send you another one where with these machines bikes the bike manufacturers seem to just give a shit a bit more you can buy an expensive car and it can be the expensive class because it has more luxury and it'll have not better brakes it'll just have better add-ons like it comes with all these add-ons and all the rest of it they're more, they're more bothered about sending you a package than fucking anything else we've been through this before what i'm saying is is all these people when i put these videos up cite these stupid fucking you know stupid articles getting back to one man where on the reverse side I have two bikes, the SV and the uh, Z900. That was made in, or designed in 2000. That was designed in 2017, and it still has a fast idle. Jason from Who Is It did, you know, the Mophead. He did a video about its complete bollocks. We're going to get to that because his visual demonstration is fucking horribly wrong. But anyway, and we're going to talk about how visual demonstrations can actually get you to side with your argument where it's not an actual proper experiment. But anyway. The whole point of warming up your engine is because, like everyone's heard from people like Castro and stuff, that the 75% of your wear happens in the first five minutes, basically just because um, your oil isn't thin enough, it hasn't got into all the capillaries and all the other bits and pieces and all the rest of it. It's a sluggish oil. Your engine has to work hard to start pumping that up until it gets warmer. Then when the oil's basically free-flowing, you can get to all these in your little honing marks and all the rest of it and stuff like that, and it helps reduce wear. This is a mechanical principle as old as engines are, that if you run a cold engine, cold seizes, stuff like this can exist. People have got two strokes, know exactly what cold seizes are, and so on and so on. In MotoGP, they warm their bikes up. When you go to track days, you warm your bikes up. When you do drag racing, you warm your engines up. Everything gets warmed up because that's where it likes to live. That's where it's been designed to operate. All these people say, all these car manufacturers say the opposite. That's because they don't give a shit. If your car blows up in five years, they're going to churn out the cars so they want you to buy them. They don't give a shite. It is not going to cause your engine to explode, but with bikes, we are a bit more mechanically sympathetic and you know we want these things to work they are. These are also high-performance engines compared to most cars on the road, which means that when they heat up and stuff, they've got tighter tolerances, tighter, no, tighter clearances. God, I'm at it now stuff like that you know what i mean so when your engine is cold you're going to get more blow by you're going to get more piston slap which again equals more wear stuff like that so you want your engine to be warmed up before you start putting load on the engine now there are some manuals that turn around and say do not let it idle which is a bit of a funky thing there are some manuals that say do not let the engine idle start the engine up and off you go that i am pretty positive i don't have any direct proof and i'm just going to say that but i am pretty positive that is because of emissions so if you fit a fast idle system your engine goes from 1000 rpm up to about 2000 rpm which means you are literally using twice the fuel now a lot of these bikes and all the rest of it they have to pass emissions testing at a certain RPM, about 5,000 RPM, but they also have to pass it at idle. Because when you're stopped in traffic, you're sat there idling away. So that's why the emissions guys are bothered about idling. Some of these bikes, if they are fitted, because they have large clearances, because the engine gets really hot, because these engines can produce a lot of power, which means the pistons are gonna expand quite a lot, a lot of guys have been talking about the uh, Nissan GTI and there's a lot of piston slap until you warm the thing up. Same kind of thing there. Um, you notice it a lot with Ducatis. They sound real clattery when they're cold. And I'm not talking about the clutch. I'm literally talking about the actual cylinders themselves. They have large clearances. There's a lot of meat there. It's a big piston. It's a big bore. So the thermal expansion will be more because there's a lot more meat there. The pistons are bigger. Um, because of this their blow by is quite hard so basically what manufacturers want to do is they want you to get that engine warm now yamaha just say if they've got like the new r1m or something shit like that they cannot fit a fast idle system because if they do they fail the emissions for idle because 
the clearances are massive. There's a lot of gas blow by. A lot of that gas blow by goes out your crankcase breather, and then you have to then deal with that and recirculate that back into the engine. Stuff like that. Not only that, is you're sat there at 2,000 RPM. So if you're failing your emissions, you say, shit, we can't have a fast idle. So they remove it, and in the, their manual, they say, start the bike up and get it going. Just start riding off really slowly, you know, under 4,000 revs, just rev it off. The reason why is because that load is going to help. Um, you're not sat at idle, and that L, that load is going to help heat up the engine quicker. It is going to increase the wear slightly, but it's it's the the go between that they have to. Um, it's kind of like the workaround they have to do. So they advise you to just get going so that um, you do warm the engine up quicker, so it's not in this cold region for a long time. Um, so it, that is going to help reduce the wear, but also they can't fit a fast idle system. It's between a rock and a hard place. How do I know that and it's not some mechanical system that they just can't have the bike idle? Well, <laughs> you get on your R1, you ride around those traffic lights, you sit there for three minutes with it idling. Are you killing your engine? No. They're saying on startup, you can't idle your engine or don't idle your engine, get going. Because that, have it sat there idling, because it has no fast idling system, is basically you're going to sit in that cold region for a longer time. These bikes are fitted, and you've got to remember what that is. The SV's got fast idle, the um, Z900 has got fast idle, and they work on the same, the same principle. It's a solenoid valve that basically slightly opens your throttle. You can actually, you can undo it on the Z900. Basically, you start the bike up, it starts to fast idle. If you roll the throttle forward and forcibly close the throttle, it'll back down back to 1,000 RPM. You let go, and the, the ECU and the solenoid will take over and open it up to 2,000 RPM. Now, these systems cost money. You need the program in the ECU. Now, it's not much. It's not much of a control system, but it is something you have to add. You have to add the solenoid system that basically fits all the motor. Some of them are motors, or a lot of them are motors, actually. But you have to add the motor to the system to open that throttle butterfly and take control. This doesn't have traction control, so it doesn't have that ability normally built in. It's like a traction control system without all the software and sensors. Um, but basically, the, me the mechanics of it are the same. And... That's costing them money. That Kawasaki have gone out of the way. It's a 2017 bike. You know, it's released in 2017. Mine's an 18, but you get what I mean. Um, they've added that extra cost and have that thing do that on purpose to basically just increase the longevity of your engine. They do care because, you know, people review shit and give them crap for what the crap that they do. You know what I mean? Bike manufacturers just seem to care a lot more than car ones. Car ones, they're just on about churning out the next model. But yeah, so all these pants, the money spent on the pant, the pant's going to cost you about between 25 and 50 grand to do a worldwide one to cover all the countries that you need to. You've got to have the attorneys and all the rest of it that basically fill out these patents. You've got um, the R&D costs for actually just working out this system. Then you've got to literally pay for these motors, these control systems, and then install them and all that shit. If it was for no reason they wouldn't bother doing it. They're wasting money. You know, they only spend money where they absolutely have to. And one of these things is that's where they're bothered. So we've got some guy in America who, don't get me wrong, he's probably qualified in this and the other, talking shit. Or, let me put it this way, I can either believe this one guy, the one source with no data that I've seen, or I can trust what my manufacturer says and all these patents and all these manufacturers do this kind of thing. Not with every single bike and stuff like that. Like I say, there's these shed tests and all these other emissions and stuff like that. And sometimes they just can't get around it. A lot of the bikes that don't have... Um, there's, there's two kind of bikes that don't have these fast idle systems. One, that's cheap bikes. So cheap throwaway bikes like 125s and stuff, a lot of them don't have it. And the top, top-end sports performance bikes, a lot of them don't have it. And I reckon that's because of emissions. Anyone's got any information and put me wrong, that would be absolutely fine. I'd be great to see it, you know what I mean? But as far as I can tell, without having the data in front of me, they've fitted it for a reason. It's costing them money to do so when they could just easily admit it and just say, you know, it's your bike now, fuck you. Whatever. So I'd much rather trust the fact that all these companies are putting patents in and fitting these systems. That's the most important thing, is actually fitting these systems to their fleet of bikes. If you're going to make 200,000... Z900s and Z1000s, these little motors, you know, and the control system, it could be like $20, $30 or something like that, $50 maybe. 
but that's for every single one it's going to be a couple of million to pay for all that you know what i mean and if they didn't require it they just wouldn't bother one little thing i'll finish on is a lot of people turn around and say oh matt you've read the cardinal sin you're a british guy and you basically price stuff up in dollars that is quite a common thing in engineering the companies that i work with or work for um on the grand on the grand stage of things you deal in dollars it's just the way it is you know what i mean um so that's kind of why i say that when i talk about things that are british so when i talk about petrol prices when i talk about how much oil is going to cost you from your local garage and stuff like that i generally say it in pounds when i start talking about the cost of assembly and stuff like that on the world stage kind of thing everyone talks in dollars that's why i say that so that's the reason for that it's not the fact that i'm trying to smooth up to the americans or anything it's just in that world and there'll be guys in the comments saying yes i work in manufacturing you know world stage manufacturing stuff and we basically t do cost analysis and talk about costing and stuff in dollars it's just the way it is hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit